To all of you out there going crazy about it's a visual medium, I have one question for you. How many silent movies have you watched recently? <laughs> The emotional and narrative power of people talking to each other cannot be overstated. Think about your life, what you know, what you care about, how you get things done. Now try taking the talking out of that. Dialogue is one of the best ways you can show, not tell. Because show, don't tell does not actually mean make it visual. It means if you want the audience to know something, make it happen. Put it into behavior, into some kind of action between the characters. Now the ability to write dialogue is a gift. Shifting into different voices comes more easily to some writers than others. But if it does not come easily, you can still learn the mechanics and with practice develop that skill. So let's talk about things to work on to get better at writing dialogue. The most important thing is stop thinking about dialogue as just a way to convey information. Dialogue is action. If you want someone to convey information, they need a convincing personal reason in that moment to do so. You can't make the audience believe or feel something by mentioning it. Even strong emotional statements like I love you or I hate you will just pass through our minds without making a connection if it doesn't have an effect on another character in that moment. Think about what each character is trying to accomplish, what they are doing when they speak. Are they trying to comfort, impress, seduce, intimidate, interrogate, confess, evade, give an order, make a choice, announce news, lie, manipulate, convince, and so many more. So once you realize that dialogue is action, the inescapable next question becomes, what is the effect of a line? Does it do what the speaker intended? If not, what effect does it have? When a character speaks, they're trying to accomplish something, to make something happen. So then what? Did it work? How? What action does it provoke in the person they're speaking to. And if it didn't work, what does the character do about that? Do they move on? Do they try again with more force? Do they change to a different approach? Do they break down or blow up? Actors and directors sometimes call these changes of action within a scene adjustments. And it's a really useful way to think about dialogue because all of dialogue is basically actions and adjustments. I like this concept much better than actions and reactions, because reactions is kind of a dead end. You don't really go any place with a reaction. But if there are actions and adjustments, each side is trying to do something. Each side is taking action, and they're making moves in this game they are playing with each other. And this idea that all dialogue is action is really useful when you're trying to understand the concept of subtext. Subtext can scare new writers because it seems like something very technical and fancy, but it's really just the action behind the words. Because very often, people don't say exactly what they mean or what they want or what they're trying to do. That's subtext. Subtext is not your secret meaning for the scene. It's theirs, what the character is privately thinking or feeling. It's the energy running under the lines they're speaking and the adjustments they're making. Actors love subtext because it gives them something to do, something to play when they're speaking. And audiences love it too because they get engaged. They're trying to play the game, read the characters. Okay, once you get the basic essential truth of dialogue, which is that it's action, there's still a whole pile of nifty dialogue hacks, which I'm going to give you now in no particular order. While you are writing dialogue, stop now and then and read some lines out loud. Are there words or sounds that are hard to speak out loud? Does it sound like someone talking? Are the sentences so long you lose the point or need to take a breath? Step back a little and listen to how your friends and family talk. 
people at your work or school or in the park or on the train, and study the dialogue in movies and shows you love. Study plays and try writing for theater. Putting two people on a stage and building a scene just through their talk is the best dialogue writing class I know. End the conversation. Have something change, or raise a new question, or have it be interrupted, or even clearly left hanging. Just let us know this particular interaction is done. And good dialogue can include lines of action or description. Like in this example, you can use an action line to break up the dialogue for rhythm or emotion. Don't do this too much because it slows your pace, but sometimes in a key moment, you want to slow it down, make it hit harder. This can also be a helpful trick when you want the dialogue to be indirect or subtexty, but you fear or find that readers aren't getting it. Beware of debates. A reasonable presentation of plot points in an intelligent, balanced, logical manner is not how people talk. If your characters are engaged in the action of debating for their personal reasons in that moment, that's fine. But way too often, the writer is trying to force-feed us information by cutting it into little pieces and giving them out to different characters. Don't do that. Likewise, beware of Q and A's. Interrogation can be a dazzling basis for a scene. Don't just disguise a monologue by interrupting it with leading questions. For one thing, making them ask stupid passive questions is an awful thing to do to an actor. Characters can, of course, ask questions for a personal reason in the moment. In other words, it's still got to be an action. Now, this one might sound kind of obvious, but make sure your characters are talking to the other person in the scene. You speak differently to your boss than to your lover. You speak differently if you are trying to impress someone, or calm them down, or stall them. The voice, the language, the style should come out of the relationship in that moment. Also, ask yourself, does it flow? Does each line somehow come from the last line and lead to the next? Even if it's a joke or an interruption or a deliberate change of subject, is it part of the flow of the scene? And is it news? Most dialogue should contain something unknown to the person hearing it. Don't show us people telling each other stuff that they already know. And obviously, if dialogue should be news, then repetition is death. Repeating an idea or saying the same thing in different words should almost always be cut. Except sometimes people talk like that. It can reveal how they're thinking. So I say if you have characters repeat themselves, do it because they need to repeat. And word order is a tool. Use it. What people start with or save for last, what they put forward or hold back, tells you a lot about what they're thinking and feeling, sometimes as much as the words themselves. The audience grabs on to whatever comes first in a line, but they get the biggest impact from how a line ends. It's the opposite of what they taught you in school. You don't write a topic sentence and then explain it. Hold the kick till the end. Because since dialogue is action, once you've said the most important thing, you're done. Something's supposed to happen. It's time for an adjustment. This is especially true in speeches. A speech is a little set piece. You're asking the audience and the other people in the scene to stop and listen. So a speech really ought to be an event, a climax, a revelation, a turning point. You want a speech to be a little journey, which the audience becomes aware of as it begins. And then you want to craft the rhythm and the shape of the speech in the style of the speaker, with a distinctive, worthwhile, meaningful ending. This is a big one. Give each character a voice. Everybody talks about it, but what does it mean exactly? It's it's not one thing, so let's break down some of the elements of a character's voice. Think about the world your character is from. 
every place, every job, every social group has its own vocabulary and way of speaking. Jargon is technical language in a specific type of work or activity. Slang is casual language shared by a specific group. They're both very useful. Making up jargon or slang is especially fun, but don't use it in such a way that the people outside those groups can't understand what's going on. Character voice is more about attitude and style than anything else. Think about their way of speaking. Do they shape their sentences carefully or ramble or interrupt themselves? Do they ask a lot of questions? Are they indirect or blunt? Do they quote a lot or analyze or make things into jokes or threaten? That's really the key to giving your character a voice. It's not an external layer you apply. It comes from inside them, who they are, what they're feeling, who they're talking to. But I'd also like to stop here for a moment and push back a little on the universal consensus about character voice. There are a lot of legendary writers, from Patty Chayefsky to Amy Sherman Palladino, who write every character kinda talk in the same way. And it's great. Yes, some people won't like it, you may be rejected for it, you may never break through, but most art that matters, most influential or exciting art, has a voice. I don't know, think about it. To me, it seems like your voice is worth gambling on, at least some of the time, if you can. Also, along those lines, I want to take a second here to contradict everything I've said so far and point out that this dramatic action in the moment, character-based concept of dialogue is not the only way. If you look at anime and comic books and video games and many old movies and books, they often have a very different approach. They can have dialogue that's more declarative or poetic or full of objective commentary. And that can all work. There are different styles of art. I'm teaching you how to write what might be called character-based dialogue. It's the way most commercial stories are told in the current American Hollywood system, and I think it's a useful skill to have. But if you are drawn to a different style, and it comes naturally to you or you feel it, take that seriously. Work on it. Explore it. See how it works. Find your voice. That's what I know about writing dialogue. The main way you learn how it works and get good at it is write some dialogue, write a lot of dialogue, get people to read it, get people to read it out loud, and then do all of that again, and again, and again. What else did you think I was going to tell you to do? Go write something. If you like this video, like this video and subscribe to this channel. Leave me comments, ask me questions in the comments section of this video, or go to writingforscreens.com. I have one question for you. <laughs> What's the next lie? It's a visual medium! <laughs> Try taking the aeroplane out of that. There's a link in the video. Last takes are no good. Said the word wrong. Said the word wrong. The wrong word. Wrong word. Because. Remem. Because remem. <laughs> Oops.